Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Seva, and today we're investigating a quite novel and exotic portfolio optimization technique, which is a minimum turbulence portfolio that quite heavily builds on the concept of financial turbulence developed and uh, first applied by Stockel and Hanke in 2014 that um, accommodates a technique first developed and applied in natural sciences and appropriates it for financial applications. Financial turbulence can be treated or interpreted as a risk measure that quantifies the unexpected deviations in terms of your portfolio constituents, the deviations or turbulences of returns from their mean values. And this also quite heavily uses concepts of the covariance matrix that's quite uh, famously applied in many modern portfolio theory, portfolio optimization algorithms, as well as uh, various notions of weights. And today we'll apply it to six uh, prominent asset classes and form a minimum turbulence portfolio of those, namely uh, different kinds of stocks, uh, bonds, gold, and real estate. We have got their daily returns already calculated, and we've got five years worth of data, totaling 1,258 observations for returns. First, we'll have to calculate the covariance matrix, meaning that we'll need d mean returns to calculate the covariance matrix using the multiplication of two d mean return matrices. That's the fastest, perhaps, way to do that. But we'll also need d mean returns for our financial turbulence calculations. So here we hit two birds with one stone. So why not calculate the d mean returns first? We'll just calculate the simple return averages across all sample days for six asset classes separately. And then we'll demean our observations by subtracting the relevant means for a particular asset from each and every of our observations, dragging it across and clicking all the way down. Now we have got to start with uh, a portfolio that we'll strive to optimize from. And uh, most commonly, we just start from an equally weighted portfolio, which means that each of the asset classes would have a weight of 1 over 6. And the sum of weights should be 100%. That's one of the constraints that we'll need to specify. For the matrix algebra uh, procedures that are implemented when calculating financial turbulence, we'll also need the diagonal matrix of weights, which would be equal to respective weights on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. That is simply a technical um, feature that helps simplify and streamline the calculations. So no need to pay that much attention to the concept of the diagonal weight matrix. Um, again, mostly a technical feature. And now we have to calculate the covariance matrix using the usual method. We will calculate it using a matrix multiplication of a transposed matrix of d mean returns onto a non-transposed said matrix dividing it by the number of observations minus 1, meaning that we have to divide by 1257. Enforcing the formulas in shift control enter gives us the daily covariance matrix. And here we can uh, also calculate the inverse of this matrix. This goes straight into the financial turbulence formula. We apply M inverse to our 6 by 6 daily covariance matrix and get a symmetric inverse. Now, we also have to normalize our financial turbulence measure by the sum squared of weights. This is a very common portfolio concentration metric that we dealt with when discussing mean concentration optimization, for example, in this video. However, here it uh, serves another purpose. It uh, seeks to provide a level playing field for portfolios that are heavily concentrated and that are quite sparsely concentrated, quite diversified. So it, we treat their turbulence not as a property that's accompanying concentration, but rather as an inherent property of um, asset classes themselves in a portfolio of 
these. So we can calculate the squared sum of our weights and normalize our financial turbulence measure later by this. So finally, we can start calculating financial turbulences for each and every of our sample days. Starting with the first, we need to apply the square root function, then apply one over the sum of squared weights, and then start multiplying matrices together. This would be a quite bulky matrix multiplication formula, and will have a nested application in it to facilitate everything in one uh, cell. So first we go and mult, and we need to multiply our uh, vector of d mean returns. This is why we actually calculated it besides the covariance matrix calculations by the uh, matrix of diagonal weights, which is over here. So we multiply the vector of d mean returns onto the matrix of diagonal weights here. And we need to lock both the row for the squared weights and the rows for the diagonal weights here. Then we apply another emult on top of it and multiply this on the right by the inverse covariance matrix, locking the rows still. And then we need to multiply this yet again on the right by the same expression we have got over here, yet transposed. So emult yet again, comma, and a transposed product of d mean returns and diagonal weights. So we copy this expression, paste it inside the transpose brackets, close the appropriate number of brackets, and enforce the formula, giving us a financial turbulence of 58.05% in the very first day. Again, this can be studied as a dynamic uh, figure in terms of when the market was more turbulent and less turbulent. We can actually plot that as a line chart, selecting both columns and inserting a line chart here. And we see that, quite unsurprisingly, major turbulent episodes revolved around March-April 2020, when the whole uh, stock and other markets were in major disarray, which is unsurprising, meaning that the turbulence figure does indeed reveal something informative and meaningful about the risk structure of said assets. However, we're interested in optimizing our portfolio so that the average turbulence across a representative period is minimized. How to achieve that? Well, we need to go to Data Solver and specify our task. First of all, our objective. It's the financial turbulence, average turbulence over the sample period in cell W36. We seek to minimize it by changing our asset class weights, which are here in cells W7 to AB7. The only constraint that we need to uh, acknowledge is that the sum of weights should be equal to 1. And we can leave our uh, box ticked as we don't want uh, short selling uh, enabled in this optimization. Uh, feel free to untick it if you want your portfolio to include a short selling potentially, if the optimal solution requires so. And then we can click solve and wait until the algorithm converges, and it just has. We can see that our minimum turbulence portfolio has got uh, a figure that's um, considerably lower than we started with, albeit not by that much. We started with a turbulence of 82%, we ended up with a turbulence of 79%, and our portfolio is quite considerably weighted in corporate bonds in comparison to an equally weighted portfolio, with uh, roughly 20% allocations in uh, large small stocks and real estate, and small but not necessarily negligible allocations into treasury bonds and gold. And that's all there is regarding the application of the minimum turbulence portfolio for weight optimization. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.